Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Inspirational Stories. My name is Daniel Hill and today I interview Cara. Now Cara went through a hell of a life to begin with. She had many, many challenges that she overcame. She lost her father at a very young age. She also witnessed um, some quite tragic deaths, um, which really were very unsettling for a, for a young person. Um, she then uh, piled on the pounds and was uh, 300 pounds at one point, so quite obese. She was 20, that's 21 and a half stone. Within three years, she'd become anorexic and was down to six and a half stone. I mean, that's like losing, you know, two thirds of yourself, even more than that within three years. Um, she became anorexic, um, um, suffered with bulimia and then developed uh, alcoholism. So, you know, where can you go with this? You know, she's now cured. The cure is always within. This is all of these tools, all of the, everything that I use is all about getting the unconscious to resolve whatever it needs to resolve so that you can become more of yourself again. And the magic, the alchemy was becoming a mother. And that made her stop just like that. Her story is really inspirational. Hello, my name is Daniel Hill and welcome to another episode of Inspirational Stories. And today my guest is Cara Couch. Hello, Cara. Hi, Daniel. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your story? Sure. Um, well, kind of in a nutshell, I'm the youngest of seven. My mother was almost 40 when she had me. My dad was 51. And it was never really said, but it was kind of like, oh, gosh, another kid, that's all we need, was kind of the feeling growing up. Um, growing up, I was an extremely overweight child, was teased mercilessly throughout school, bullied, um, had extremely low self-esteem, uh, very, very shy. And my mother always had me on a diet. And it was just kind of a miserable existence as a child and teenager. When I was 16, I weighed almost 300 pounds. At that time, I went on, I had a friend, one friend, who I'm still friends with, and she wanted to go on a little diet and lose her little five pounds, you know, and I'm like, hey, yeah, whatever, you know, um, when you have that much weight to lose, it's kind of, you know, five pounds really isn't much. But I did it. I went on this, this started this journey with her. And over the course of a summer, I lost 30 pounds. And I thought, wow, hey, I'm doing this, I can do this. Yeah. And so I kept going. And within a year, I lost 100 pounds. And I was just, I became petrified at gaining it back. So I was probably 17 at this time, almost 18. And during that same time, people started dropping like flies in my life because I was born to parents that were older. Um, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, they were all passing over. And things that people normally go through in their 30s and 40s, I went through as a teenager. So here I am on the one hand having this major overhaul of my personal identity and my personal self um, with my weight battles, plus having to deal with, I lost my father, um, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas. Um, I had a friend that was murdered. And so there was a lot going on in that aspect of my life as well. Um, and so in trying to keep the two a little bit separate, what happened on the weight loss journey was I felt like if I gained the weight back, I was, you know, a failure. Yeah. And everybody was saying, you know, you just gain it back. That's what everybody does. You know, if you lose weight, you just gain it back. Um, and I developed eating disorders as a result of that. I was bulimic for three years and overcame that. And then um, because I more or less had to eat um, and not use other sor sources to get rid of it, um, I just got to where I wouldn't eat and became anorexic. And I think my lowest weight was about 89 pounds. Goodness. So, yeah, I was very, very thin. Well, and, and what age uh, were you then when you got to 89 pounds? From, from 300 uh, to 89? Exactly. Exactly. Um, I, let's see. I started the diet when I was 16. I think it was probably, I was probably close to 20, 19. 19 was when my dad died. So it was right when my dad died. Okay. Okay. And so I struggled with that. And, of course, that's not something you can 
realistically keep up <laughs> as a lifestyle without, you know, being extremely ill. Um, and, you know, I don't know what made me kind of come out of that, but I did. And I always made sure that I was thin, but not that thin. Um, in my earlier years, it was, a, you know, my whole life revolved around my weight. Yeah. You know, that was my life. But I, I got it under control. And I, you know, started working on my self-esteem and, you know, never thought I was pretty, but, you know, just got it to where I could live with myself. Um, I never did gain back the weight that everybody said I would gain back. But I, you know, when in my younger days, I did tend to keep it at a much lower weight than I, I would now. Um, when I was in, I guess I was... 22, um, major, major crisis in my life. My brother, I have two brothers that are older than I am. My oldest brother's house burned down and his wife and two little boys perished in that fire. And that was really a very, well, very difficult time. Um, but it, it also, in a very strange way, was kind of a the start of my spiritual awakening. I don't know exactly why, but it was it was something that just kind of, I, I had this feeling the night that it happened that something wasn't right. I couldn't sleep. <coughs> my, mother, my mother and I were actually going to be going to Hawaii the next day, the, the day the fire happened. But for some reason, I couldn't sleep. And that wasn't like me. And about four in the morning, we got a phone call that we needed to go to the hospital. There had been a fire. My brother survived, but his wife and two children perished in that fire. And that's an image I'll never forget. It's, it's still, when I, when I look back at that, um, it's a very surreal memory. My sister-in-law sister and two nephews didn't have a mark on them. It was all due to smoke inhalation yeah. that they died. Um, and, and seeing them leave them in a, ca in a casket was... You know, just something out of a, you know, horror movie. Um, and then, you know, of course, having to be there for my brother through all this, who did survive, went through a window to get help and survive that. So, you know, I kind of look at those years as what I call the dark years. Um, there wasn't joy. There wasn't happiness. There, w It was just a lot of getting along in life, you know, no real anything to look forward to, no real sense of self, no sense of spirituality. And so things kind of started evening out. It, you know, the losses slowed down. By, by about the time I was 26, 27, I developed a pretty significant drinking problem. And for me, it was just an escape. It was, if I drank, I, you know, didn't have to think about everything that went on in my life. And that continued on for about a year. And um, again, one of those weird uh, woohoo moments. Um, I had met my kid's dad at the time and got, had gotten married. And I just knew before I knew that I was expecting. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, the urge to drink just went away. Right. And I quit absolutely cold turkey.